Hello and welcome to today's live broadcast. My name is Abidemi Mwato and uh, we're continuing our series on going from minor to major. <clears throat> this is uh, episode 14 in the series and the second one um, that we're looking at David's life, David's journey. We're tracking David's journey from minor to major, from being a shepherd uh, to becoming the king of Israel. Okay, so let's um, read through 1 Samuel chapter 16 and we're reading verses 1 to 13. So hopefully we'll be able to cover this today, but if not, we'll carry on tomorrow. Because David, there's a lot about David that we need to talk about, that we're going to learn from his life. Okay, okay. 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. I mean, I think later on we'll talk about, you know, the background to this um, statement that, that Samuel made. The Lord said, take a high fire with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. So verse four, Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Remember Samuel was a prophet of God. He used to be the judge of Israel. He's the king maker and so on. Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Wow, that's strong. Mm. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Okay. Praise the Lord. So today we're looking at uh, David's childhood. Okay, remember we're considering going from minor to major. So an important aspect of that is the childhood. When we looked at the life of um, Joseph, we saw the kind of childhood that he had. We realized that he was the father's favorite. Um, he, he had the coat of many colors, you know. That was good for him, but he... Um, he suffered for it from his siblings, okay? So we saw how this, this setting um, really affected um, Joseph and, you know, on his journey from minor to major. But when we look at the life of David, I mean, it's pathetic. The young man must have suffered quite a bit, you know, uh, being the youngest of eight brothers and then having two sisters as well, you can imagine. So we see that um, looking at his history, um, 
David was the son of Jesse. Jesse was the grandson of Ruth. Remember Ruth the uh, Moabite, the one who uh, went with um, Naomi back to Israel. You know, um, when they say, when they call you <laughs> as a lady, Ruth, you know, because Ruth said, your God will be my God, your, um, your place will be my place, and so on and so forth, and where you die, I will die, and so on and so forth. He embraced, he left his family, he left his God, he left his, she left, I beg your pardon, she left his, her family, she left her God, and embraced the God of Israel, you know, wholeheartedly. And it's no wonder that she came in the light, in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, Ruth is the great grandmother of David. Okay, Jesse is Ruth's grandson. Okay, and um, Jesse was from Ju the tribe of Judah, and he he dwelt in Bethlehem. Okay, remember when we looked yesterday at the um, at Jacob's blessing of his of his twelve children, one of the things he said about I mean the main thing he said really about Judah was that the scepter will not depart from Judah. That is, kings will come from Judah. Okay, um, so David was from the tribe of Judah. You know, like I said, the grandson of Ruth, who was a Moabite. Now the scripture does not give uh, David's mother's name. Okay, um, but one thing we know from uh, Psalm 86 and verse 16 is the fact that she must have been a godly woman. All right, because David said in, in that Psalm, because you see, David wrote, like we said yesterday, 73 of the Psalms, of the 150 Psalms. And uh, some of the information that we'll, we're going to share about David will be gleaned from the book of Psalms as well. Because David was a poet, you know, like we said yesterday. And uh, he wrote about a lot about himself, his background, and so on and so forth. Um, so if we look at uh, Psalm... If we look at uh, Psalm um, 86 and verse 16... We read here, it says, turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Okay, so we see that David's mother was a godly woman. You know, uh, it's not uncommon to um, have uh, people's moms transfer their love of God to their sons or to their daughters. We read in the scriptures as well about Timothy. When Paul was writing to, to, Tim, uh, to Timothy that the same faith that was in her grandmother, his grandmother, that was also in his mother, was now in him, Timothy. So that's one of the privileges that parents have, especially mothers, that we're able to transfer our love for God, our dedication and devotion to God. We're able to transfer it to our children. And it's a great responsibility. Even if that's all that we're called to do in life, we can be rest assured that we've done, you know, we've fulfilled our course. You know, when we raise children, not just to for them to, you know, become uh, the doctors and the lawyers or they have to acquire some skills that will help them in life. Yes, all that, but also in particular to raise them to love God, to serve God and to love God, you know. Personally, um, <laughs> I cannot rest if any of my children is not serving God. I mean, <laughs> there is no no rest there. Because the Bible says that what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and then loses his soul? So, I mean, you can we can train our children. We can, you know, give them, you know, um, earthly riches and so on and so forth. But if they lose out uh, on, on knowing God, and they miss out on their destiny, then we have a part to play in taking that blame. Okay, so we need to take that seriously. So that's one thing we know about uh, David's mom. She was a godly woman. Okay, even though the Bible doesn't give us her name. Then the other thing we know about uh, David's mom is the fact that, you know, David cared very deeply for her. 
Okay, we, we notice that um, in First Samuel 22, uh, which is further down in, in, in the book of Samuel, uh, we notice that when David was running from Saul, he actually went to Moab, the king of Moab. Remember, you know, he, he must have, uh, you know, gone to the king of Moab based on her connection to Moab through Ruth. Remember? Anyway, he, he went to the king of Moab and went to ask the king of Moab if he could bring his mother and his father there for them to take refuge with him because he was running away from Saul and Saul was, you know, a mental case at that time. So he could kill them just like he killed some uh, priests of God simply because, uh, you know, they didn't tell him that David was with him. OK, so that was a, a wise move and it was a move that displays how much David cared for the mother. You know, so um, but there there are some uh, extra biblical stories that I just want to mention. Um, I just want to mention them simply because it's good to just be aware of these things. You know, um, one of those things is the fact is in the Jewish uh, history that says that David's mom's name was Nitzavet. You know, it's not mentioned in the Bible, but that's out there. And it's also, um, there were some also other stories about how um, David's mom, you know, was not really the first wife of Jesse and that David was born by a different woman and so on and so forth. I you know, in fact, they even mentioned that there was maybe an adulterous relationship. You know, that's based on what David wrote in Psalm 51 and verse 5 when he said, you know that uh, it was in in sin that the mother the mother conceived him okay uh which personally <laughs> i'm not too sure that that can be um stretched that far okay let's see psalm 51 and verse 5 it says surely i was sinful at birth well we all were <laughs> well born into sin <laughs> Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That is true of anyone. Okay. Uh, but people have stretched that to mean that uh, perhaps, you know, it was a product of adultery or whatever, whatever. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that is not written in the scriptures. And we can't really um, explain that one to mean that because that is true for every human being. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, so um, David was the youngest of eight brothers and then he had at least two sisters uh, Zariah and Abigail were at least two of the sisters that he had as recorded in the scriptures we're going to go through we see them as we go through the scriptures and the youngest of eight brothers now I mean you can just imagine being the youngest of eight brothers and in this case as we'll see later on these were not just ordinary brothers these were quite proud and arrogant brothers who didn't think he was anything at all so one can just picture and imagine uh, david's childhood what it must have been like for him you know uh, even from this little reading that we've seen now we notice that you know david suffered a kind of rejection a level of rejection okay from his family if we look in psalm 69 and verse 8 Okay, Psalm 69, verse 8. We're looking at this because we're, we're, we're trying to look at, you know, David's background. Um, it says here, Psalm 69, verse 8 says, I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. Um. David was um, rejected, okay, by his brothers, by his mother's children, his brothers, okay, and we see a sign of that. In fact, when um, Samuel was coming to anoint one of Jesse's sons, he actually told Jesse that he was coming to anoint one of his sons to be king, because that's what God told him to go and do. Jesse, hearing that, the Bible says he consecrated his sons. But guess what? He left David out. He left David in the fields 
to be looking after the sheep. That, first of all, tells me that he was not reckoned with at all. You know, that's number one. Then number two, it tells me that they didn't, he didn't even think that David was a king material. You know, while all the, you know, the proper, the prim, the tall ones were consecrated and prepared ready, David was not even in the, on the scene at all. I mean, that, sh that, that shows you the level of rejection that the, the, the young man must have gone through. To be left on the fields looking after the sheep when something so important, the, the kingmaker was coming around and had already informed you that, look, I'm coming to anoint one of your sons. For God's sake, if not for anything, at least for that particular occasion, bring the boy in. But no, he was left in the fields with the sheep. So that gives us an idea of his childhood, of what he went through, okay? But, you know, um, just like he says in Psalm 27 and verse 10, he says, because you see, like we said, when we look at the Psalms, we'll, we'll be able to piece together a lot about David's life, you know? Especially this, his childhood. In Psalm 27 and verse 10, he says, If my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. And this is graphic in terms of David's life. His parents, well, I'm not sure about the mother, the mother's not mentioned, but it was the father that was mentioned, that he had forgotten about him completely, that he was even that was even a son outside in the fields. Okay. As far as David was concerned, that doesn't matter much. Because if they do, God will take me up. And that was his experience. His parents, his family, you know, they rejected him. You know, they, they didn't reckon with him. They didn't think he was king material. They left him out there with the sheep. I mean, just imagine, you know, that's, that's what he was good for, to take care of the sheep while the others presented themselves as kingly potential kings, consecrated themselves and presented themselves as, you know, potential kings. This is so different from Joseph's experience. Joseph was, you know, um, favored by the father. You know, he was treated so differently. He, he you know, he was, uh, he, he enjoyed a certain level of favor that others did not. But the opposite is true of David. He was rejected. He was treated as the scum. He was treated as somebody who had no potential. Except to be, except to be in the fields and look after the sheep. That when important occasion was the priest was coming round and had informed you beforehand, David did not show. He wasn't brought in at all. He was forgotten completely. That is sad. But you see, there are two ways people can react to situations. Okay, one is to whine and cry and moan and groan and uh, complain how they rejected him and be depressed and everything and so on and so forth. But David chose to react the opposite way, okay? He chose to react the opposite way according to what we read in Psalm 27 verse 10. It says, if my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. So David allowed the rejection that he was going through in his father's house, the fact that he was not reckoned with as anybody that mattered, he allowed that to drive him into God, okay? He allowed it to drive him into God in such, a, in such a way that David developed such a deep relationship with God. In fact, I find that um, David's experiences with God, as you see in the Psalms, the way he describes God, you know, shows a high level of relationship that David had, you know, that no other man had as at that time. You know, David was very, very close to God, you know, as at that time, because he, the, his, his, his experiences in life, he allowed those experiences to drive him into God. He cultivated a relationship with God. You can imagine being with the sheep all day long. I mean, for God's sake, you can only play with the sheep for, <laughs> for so long. You get bored, you get lonely, you're on your own all the time. You know, so David did not waste that time. He spent that time drawing close to God. He allowed the time to drive him into God. That loneliness, 
it drove him into God so much so that he had such experience and relationship of God that when you read the Psalms, for instance, you know, my favorite Psalm really is Psalm 23, where he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oof. How beautiful is that? David, as a shepherd boy, recognized that the Lord is his shepherd. So that everything that he did for the sheep, the Lord is doing for him. You know, how he watched over them, how he laid down his life. What a revelation. You know, he actually got a revelation of Jesus dying for us. Jesus said he, 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 he was the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. David had a revelation of that, you know, even in, even though he was an Old Testament saint, he had a revelation of the Lord being his shepherd because he had such deep relationship with God. Also, if you look at something like uh, Psalm 27, in verse, the first verse of it, remember this verse 10 where he said, if my father and my mother, because that was his experience. He was forgotten, he was forsaken. And the Lord picked him up and he, 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 he sought after God. He, he, he pressed into God, okay? In verse 1, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? It is not uncommon to be out when you are out there with the sheep. You know, dangerous animals come around. People that want to steal the sheep will come around. And they are ready to do anyone harm. You know, so it was a potential situation for him to be fearful for his life. But he had a revelation of the fact that the Lord is his light and his salvation, his deliverance, his protection. And because of that, whom Will he fear? If the Most High God is our is our light and our salvation, we we do not have to be afraid of anybody. No fear of man. No fear of man. And we see that cultivating this relationship with God shows up later on in life, when the time came for David to be to be presented to the world. You know, he came out. Not with a sense of insecurity, but with a perfect sense of security because he had a relationship with God and he was secure in himself, secure in God. The Lord who has been his shepherd, his, who had watched over him, who has delivered him from danger and harm, the same Lord was with him all the time, as we'll see later on. Hallelujah. So this is so very, very important that David allowed the rejection, rejection that he suffered you know, growing up to drive him into God. So that he had such a beautiful relationship with God, you know. So, I mean, I think maybe we'll just stop here and continue tomorrow. But there are some lessons that I want us to I want to bring out here. See, what people think about you does not really matter. We're going from minor to major, right? It doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter how they treat you. It doesn't matter whether they think you are kingly material or not. It doesn't matter whether they say, oh, all you are good for is to be in the fields looking after the sheep. It doesn't matter whether they say, oh, you're, you, you, you can't um, cope with intellectual or whatever. You're, it doesn't make any difference what people think. Hear me and hear me clear and good. God had preordained certain paths that you would walk in. He had a purpose in mind for you before you came on the scene, before he sent you into the world, okay? So all you need to do is to connect yourself with God. That's, that's what David did, okay? That's what David did. It doesn't matter whether you are the uh, favorite in the family, like Joseph was, or you are the, the one that was uh, considered as an outcast, like David was. It makes no difference. God, who had preordained or maybe even you are in between. <laughs> you are neither Joseph nor David. You are in between. Okay. It makes no difference. It doesn't even matter how you came into the world. It makes no difference whether David was a child of adultery or whatever. It does not make any difference whatsoever. What is most important is the fact that God has a plan and he has a purpose. Just like he did for David's life. And he was ready to take David to that place of major. Irrespective of what anybody thought irrespective of how he came into the world, irrespective of what his childhood experiences have been. And that's one thing I want us to really learn today. I want you to take from this today, that your, your experiences in life, your background, how you came into this world, how you've been treated, or people have said about you, they might have talked you down or said, they said that about you. 
maybe you are from the ghetto or you are from, you know, the <laughs> deprived areas or where it makes no difference. I'm telling you today, if you hook up with God and you connect with him and believe him and trust him, that that which he had preordained for you from before the foundations of the earth and you get close to him and draw close to him and put your hands in his hand, he will take you to your major. David, an outcast, rejected by his family, embraced God, sold out to God. He did not consider, he, he, he made the most use of his lonely moments, as we will see later on during the next episode. You know, how that David used all the gifts that God gave him to draw close to God. Okay? He had a solid covenant relationship. He understood covenant better than anybody else. In fact, God actually refers to covenant that he made with David. How that he would not, he would, he, he, he would not change his mind. He would not alter the words that have come out of his mouth towards David. David was a man, truly a man after God's heart. So I want to encourage you today. Allow Whatever experiences we go through, whatever your child do, whether negative or positive, you know, don't allow those to determine your future, right? You know, David's case is similar to that of the Lord Jesus Christ, actually. You know, he's the, uh, is one of his, Jesus' um, father, I don't know how far down the line, but Jesus is referred to as the son of David, all right? Um, the same is true. Of David as the true of the Lord Jesus Christ that the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief corner stone if we look in Psalm 118 Psalm 118 and verse 22 18 verse 22 okay we read there the stone the builders rejected has become the corner stone the Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. That is the story of David. As we're tracking it, we'll find out. It's similar to what the Bible says about Jesus as well in Luke chapter 20 and verse 17. That the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. It doesn't make any difference what people think about you, where you come from, what your background is, what your past is, what your present is. What is most important is for us to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and to draw close to him and to look, place our hands in his hands and be, and be ready to be led, to be directed, to be instructed, you know, to be taken from where we are to where we're going. That is the most important thing today. I just want to leave that with you. And I just want to say a quick prayer that God will, by his spirit, uh, give you the mind of Christ. So irrespective of the um, difficult situations that you've gone through in life that might have affected your uh, disposition, maybe they've made, such things has made you to be insecure, you know. Um, when you're growing up in a family like David did, where he was the youngest of all and he was treated really badly, some people, they become so insecure if they do not find their security in God. And insecurity is a deadly thing. That was what... Uh, happens to Saul, the king before David. You know, he be, he was so insecure, you know. Um, but our security can only be found in God. And that's what David did. He found, he located himself in God, connected himself, you know, deeply with God and became so secure that nothing could shake him. Nothing, absolutely, you know. And uh, we'll see, as we'll see later on, he, he, he had such a, 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 a clear of the covenant that he had with God, okay? And that affected the way he lived his life. I pray the same person that's watching or that would watch, that God of heaven will give you a revelation of his love, his grace, and his mercy, and that he will become your security, that you'll be located in him. You, you will develop a relationship with him that will last your li a lifetime, that as you walk with him, he will take you from your minor to your major that he has preordained for you to go to. So I pray the God's blessing upon you today and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I keep forgetting this. If this has been a blessing to you, 
can you please comment you know and then share it widely like it and share and click notification button if you watch it on youtube do the same write a comment you know like share you know and click the subscribe button and the bell so that anytime we upload any video you'll be notified this is so important so that you're not missing out on anything okay right bye for now and i'll see you tomorrow